Hello everyone, I'm Colleen and I'm back for another live stream. I know you might notice something a little bit different today. <laughs> I'm wearing my headphones, my usual Bluetooth that I normally use decided that it did not want to cooperate today. So today you've got me with my my lovely, my lovely, lovely headphones. <laughs> so, um, but that's okay, as long as you can hear me, I'm good with it. <laughs> so thank you everyone for joining me today. Uh, for another live stream brought to you by Princess Daniel Staffing. If you are a returning viewer, uh, welcome back. Good to see you again. And if you're brand new to these live streams, welcome. Uh, make sure that you comment any questions or thoughts or insights on today's topic. And I'll be sure to get to those during these, during the stream and, and answer those during the stream. Uh, if you're not watching this stream live, be sure to uh, comment any questions or thoughts or insights. Um, anyway, and we will get to them as, uh, uh, at, throughout the week and we'll be sure to answer them as soon as possible. Hello, Ralph. <laughs> nice to see you again. Uh, so yeah. So if you're brand new to these, uh, and if you like, uh, the content that we are covering in these streams, be sure to drop us a like. And if you don't want to miss out on any future streams, be sure to follow our page or subscribe to our channel. So, uh, so that's my little introduction. We're all done with that. So let me just jump into today's topic. Again, make sure that you're commenting any questions or, or thoughts or insights, and I'll be sure to answer them uh, during the stream. Okay. So today's topic is accountability in a dental office. Okay. So we're going to be talking about accountability, what it is, why it's important, how to get it, and be giving you some thoughts and insights and tips on how to, uh, weave accountability into your team culture. Okay. So what is accountability? Accountability is essentially taking ownership and taking responsibility for uh, for your tasks and for your responsibilities and what you're entrusted with completing in your role, okay? It's ownership and it's uh, responsibility, okay? Now, I want to be very clear that accountability is not finger pointing, okay? Sometimes people kind of get that uh, get that kind of thought in their head that accountability is about, okay, something went wrong, who's responsible, who did it, who's uh, who's in trouble, okay? And that is not what accountability is, or at least it's not what positive accountability is. It's not what productive accountability is, okay? Accountability is simply taking ownership and taking responsibility for what you're entrusted with completing. Hello, Sahar. <laughs> nice to see you again. So that's essentially what accountability is, okay? So um, in this video, we're not going to, in this stream, we're not going to be talking about finger pointing and blaming and guilting, shaming and all those sorts of things. We're going to be talking about ownership and we're going to be talking about accountability in the sense of having a solutions focused view um, on the operations of your dental office, okay? And the office that you, that you are a part of and the team that you're a part of, okay? So that's essentially what accountability is. Why do we want it? Why do we need it? We need it in order to support the team's success in its, and the office's uh, success in its endeavors. OK, that's why we want accountability. Accountability, again, is a solutions focused uh, view of your team and the operations. OK, so if something is going right, we definitely want to make sure that we're, we're holding people accountable and, and giving that praise and giving that feedback when something goes well. And if something is not going so well, it's not working. If, if something um, fails, we want to make sure that we're having a solutions focused view. OK, so everybody is going to mess up at some point. Everybody is going to make a mistake at some point. And again, we're not going to do the finger, uh, the finger pointing or the blaming. What we're going to do is we want to figure out why. Um, something went wrong. We want to figure out what went wrong, why, and how we can fix it. Maybe it was a technical issue. Maybe it can, uh, maybe an employee can benefit from some more training, or maybe there was a miscommunication and maybe we need to establish some communication standards in the office, whatever it is. Okay. So that's why uh, it's really important. And the other thing to note about accountability is that it can't be controlled. Okay. It's got to be something that is part of your office. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> it's got to be something that's part of your office. It, it's part of your culture. OK, it's not something that can just kind of come up randomly. OK, um, so, you know, let's talk a little bit about the importance of creating a culture of accountability. Again, if we if we have that positive accountability, OK, if we have that solutions focused 
view of the operations, then your team members are not going to be scared and they're not going to be afraid of coming to you when something goes wrong. OK, they're not going to have that anxiety in coming to you and letting you know that that uh, something you know, went, came, um, fell through or, uh, messed up or something like that. They are going to have this, uh, they're going to tend to have this attitude of how can I make it better as opposed to, Oh no, I did something wrong. Maybe nobody will notice if I don't tell them. Okay. And that's what, that's what that negative accountability, that finger pointing, that blaming, guilting, shaming, that's the effect it can have on the office. Okay. I hate that anxious feeling. Yes, Ralph, I do too. I, I, I kind of, and I've worked in obvious offices like that previously where you just, you're afraid to say that you did anything wrong because you know that you're going to get, uh, you know that you're going to get berated for it. Okay. And that is not productive. It's not, um, it does not advance the operations and the endeavors of your office. Okay. So when you have that culture of positive accountability, people are free to come to you and communicate with you when something goes wrong. But if you do not, and if it, and it comes into this like shaming kind of guilting cycle, then it breeds an environment of competition. It breeds an environment of conflict and it breeds an environment of fear. And that is not productive at all. It's absolutely not productive. And that's definitely not what you want if you want to uh, become successful or continue your success. Okay. Um, so that's definitely, that's, it's definitely important to have that culture of accountability and to build that culture of accountability. So how do we do that? How do we build uh, that accountability in the dental office? Well, let's start with you as, as a team member. So as a team member, what can I do to make sure that I am retaining accountability? Um, for my for my job, okay. So, firstly, make sure that you know your role within uh, within the office, okay, and make sure you know exactly what your job is. And if you're having any confusion, or if uh, there's some sort of overlap, or there's some sort of issue with, I'm supposed to take care of this, but this person's supposed to take care of this, and it's a little bit of an overlap or something like that. Make sure you talk to your management and make it clear that uh, you're you're experiencing some confusion or um, you know, that you're not quite sure where you fit in the grand scheme of things. OK, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is uh, make sure you know how your position is going to be evaluated. OK, so if you have yearly evaluations or maybe quarterly um, job evaluations or, you know, performance reviews or things like that, make sure you know that you're clear on what is expected of you and make sure you know how you're going to be rated, what, what the rating system entails. And if you're not sure, um, you know, ask, ask, um, make sure that you get that definition so that you're clear on what is expected of you. Okay. Work environments of competition are not my cup of tea. Yeah. They're very, they're very difficult. They're very difficult to work in. It becomes very um, difficult. If, if even if you're, the person that everyone is kind of competing to be, it's a, it's very stressful to kind of hold on to that. And then if you're the type of person or if you're one of the people who is striving to be better than someone else, it's also very stressful. And it just breeds a lot of conflict and a lot of resentment. Um, and it just it just builds up. And it's not it's not good for productivity at all. It's not good for your mental health and your and your well-being as either. What do you do when someone insists it's your responsibility, but you feel it's not? Well, firstly, I would probably, um, I would probably talk to management and clarify that and say, Hey, we're having a, a misunderstanding here. Who is responsible for this? Okay. And if there's some debate about what you're supposed, to, what someone is supposed to be responsible for, then you can kind of work it out. But again, we don't want to push into that finger blaming or that, sorry, that finger pointing or that blaming and guilting. Okay. It's your job. It's your responsibility. If you start kind of finding yourself doing this, it's not productive. Uh, you could say something. So if you, if you find yourself on the other end of that spectrum, right, if you're, if you're the person who is like, I don't think I'm responsible for this. I think that um, is meant to be tasked with, or, or I think that responsibility lies with Ralph. OK, then I can say to Ralph, oh, hey, did did you take care of this? OK, was I supposed to take care of this? Because I thought this was something that you were supposed to take care of. I thought this was in your realm. Um, you want to talk this out and figure out um, how we can improve this. OK, again, having that solutions focused accountability uh, model. OK, 
Uh, so that's, that's what I would do with that. Now, uh, so those are just some things you can do to be as a team member to um, uphold accountability uh, in your team. Now, excuse me. Um, my allergies are acting up a little bit, you guys, so I apologize. Uh, so now if you are management, what can you do to help, again, weave in that accountability into your culture and help support that accountability among your team? Firstly, uh, make sure that you are focusing on giving feedback, giving very clear and, and um, consistent feedback to your people and make sure that you're checking in regularly, okay? And, um, you know, Make sure that you are, you know, communicating with them and trying to get feedback from them as well, um, just so that everything can become clear and that everybody is on the same page as to who does what and when and why. OK, um, provide deadlines for tasks and also clarify tasks um, as to when they should be done. OK, so deadlines and uh, for those regular duties, make sure that uh, your people know um, when they should be done. OK. And that way, uh, and then um, trust them to get it done, okay? Um, so yeah, just make sure those deadlines are very clear. Um, and uh, yeah, just make sure those deadlines are very clear, sorry. Uh, also be clear about the results that you are expecting. So make sure that your people know, you know, what is expected of them, okay? If they don't know, they can't deliver. So make sure it is very, very clear uh, what is expected of them and the the outcomes that you want them to achieve, okay? And then again, make sure that you're trusting your team to get it done. So all of these items can sound a little bit like I'm encouraging micromanagement, and that is absolutely not what I'm trying to do, okay? This is definitely not an invitation to micromanage. Just make sure that you are being clear and that you're communicating and then trust your team to get it done. Okay. And if they can't get it done, make sure you trust your team to come to you and let them know and let you know why or what they're having trouble with or some issues that they, uh, that they need, uh, to address. Okay. Having clear work expectations and role responsibilities are definitely helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sometimes hard to understand the chain of command with who to ask your accountability questions and for clarifications. Do you have any advice when there are many people that hold a managerial position? So hopefully you know who you report to directly. It's, it's very, very difficult to serve or to, um, to, um, inhabit a role and you're not quite sure who that reports to. Okay. So chain of command is a very, uh, is a very, um, a very important thing, very, um, important in the workplace so that you know who to take it to. Okay. And that way there's no confusion about, you know, do I ask this person? Do I ask that person? So, um, you know, and I know that certain people are responsible for certain areas and certain things, and maybe you want to ask them, but if you're unclear, um, just go to your, directly to your first level manager, okay, the person that's directly above you and ask them, okay, I have this issue, who should I go to to talk about this, okay? And hopefully you know who that is, you know, hopefully we're not overlapping management, you know, hopefully that is not happening. And if it is, I would uh, I would definitely bring it up to the next level, the person who is next in that chain of command, someone a little bit higher and say, hey, I'm, I'm getting a little confused as to who I should report to about what and when and why. OK, that is very that is definitely a very difficult uh, situation to to navigate. Sahar, I, I completely agree. Um, so, so, yeah, so we just talked about what you can do as a as a manager, as a supervisor, as a leader um, to make sure that you're supporting accountability uh, in your office and that you are. Um, you're molding and you're creating that culture of accountability in your office. So here are just some questions to ask yourself uh, for my managers and my supervisors and my leads. Um, do the team members know what is expected of them when they are hired? This is a great thing to talk about in the interview process. Okay. In the final interviews, if you have more than one uh, interview step, um, great thing to talk about. Um, and it's especially, you can even ask the incumbent, Hey, you're expected if you were, hired in this role, you'd be expected to do A, B, C, and D, would you have a problem completing those um, responsibilities and those tasks, or would you need um, assistance in doing that? Okay. And that's a great, uh, that's a great question to ask. Okay. Uh, I would stay away from, you know, a lot of the physical stuff though. 
uh, a lot of the physical requirements, you may be running into some ADAA issues there. Um, so not in the sense of more so ask those questions in the sense of knowledge and skills, if that makes sense. So can you do you know how to use email or do you know how to use computers or can you um, do you know are you do you have an x-ray certification or things of that nature? OK, uh, question. Question number two, are the team members expected to perform duties outside their main job description? If so, what are those duties and how are they monitored? OK, so if there are a lot of extra duties here and there, consider them. If it's something that's regular, it's something that they have to devote some time every week to doing. Make sure, I would consider putting it on their job description and letting them know that that's something that they um, that should be doing on a regular basis. Okay, now if it's project based, if it's something that's not going to be permanent, or if it's something that's only every once in a while, uh, I would still make sure that they know what your expectations are for that and make sure that you check in with them regularly um, to follow up on the progress of the project or, or whatever it is that they're working on. Okay, see if they need help, see how it's going and just check in. Okay. And and question number three, are team members hired just to fill an open position or or are they hired because they want to excel in a career in the dental industry? So it's, a lot of this is going back to the hiring process, which is so, so, so important. So, you know, the last thing you want to do is just hire a body. OK, you don't just want to hire somebody with a pulse. Um, just you know, you definitely want to make sure that that hiring process is working for you. Make sure that the hire process is, um, is, uh, you know, um, well documented and, um, well, and, it, and it's a streamlined process. Okay. So, you know, make sure again, make sure that you're asking, reviewing those interview questions every so often and making sure that they are the questions that you want to ask and that are, that are relevant and important to performing the duties of the position. Okay. Um, so make sure that, yeah, the hiring process is, um, is working for you and, you know, make sure to ask the tough questions in the interview process or, you know, even in the application process, make sure you're looking for uh, key items, looking for those keywords and phrases and in their applications and their resumes and cover letters, uh, et cetera, so that you have a, you know, a solid, um, predictor of future performance. Okay. Um, that's also one of the things that can really hurt morale in your office, hiring somebody who um, is not as strong in the skills that are tantamount to the position um, as opposed to hiring somebody who is a little bit more skilled and has a little bit more experience, education, or, or uh, even the skill set that is required. Okay. Um, so yeah, so make sure sure that you're, you know, covering as much of that um, in the uh, hiring process and the interviewing, et cetera, as possible and in the training phase after you've uh, after you've hired them as well. OK. So those are all that's all the information I have. I'm just reviewing some comments. See if I missed any. No, I think I've addressed them all. So thanks everyone for being here with me today and for participating and asking your great questions and, and giving me your great insights. Uh, really, really helpful, not only to me and uh, Princess Dental Staffing to know uh, what to talk about in the future, but also to other participants and other um, people watching uh, this stream um, probably have the same questions. So thanks. Uh, thanks for asking all those questions. Thanks for being here with me today. I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful week. Uh, you are welcome, Ralph. <laughs> I hope everybody has a wonderful week and I will see you next Wednesday. We do these live streams just in case you're new. Uh, we do these streams every Wednesday at noon Mountain Standard Time. That's 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 1 p.m. Central and 11 a.m. Pacific. OK, so I'll see you guys next week where we'll have a brand new topic to talk about. And I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you soon. Bye.